Hi, everybody. I'm Julie DeLuca Collins, and I am the founder CEO of Go Confidently Services. I am a podcaster, author, and also a doggy mama. And <laughs> one of the biggest things that I am excited about today is to be able to share with you this panel. As you know, and I said, power of confidence is something very special to my heart. And before we start, I want to share a little bit of why this uh, topic why today? And again, for me, one of the things that I want to be able to share with each of you who are attending and watching is that confidence is not something for the elite. It is for all of us. It is something that is available to all of us so that when we feel that confidence and passion, we can go out there and create a ripple effect, not only in the lives of those around us, but also for ourselves. Because ultimately, when we show up in the world as the best version of ourselves, then our impact is greater. And my, my first reason why I wanted to share this with you is, and I share this in my book, <clears throat> as I might have mentioned, I'm an author. And um, when I was 12 years old, I was always a very uh, outspoken child and very, um, never really, I guess, suffered from lack of confidence until I was 12 and I started to develop. I started to develop rap rapidly and I got a chest. Um, and I don't think I was ready for that. And as most of us who are 12 and changing, our bodies are evolving. One of the things that happened is that I was very self-conscious. All of a sudden, that outspoken girl that didn't have a problem um, jumping in front of people, reciting poems or going to dance recitals, found herself really self-conscious um, and not willing to step out like she had before. So this particular day, though, in 1980-something, I lived in Miami, and I was so excited because I was going to hold my head up high for a change. I was walking to school because I couldn't wait to get to school. Things were going to be so different on this day, super different. And what was going to be different is that I was not going to run into the shower stall or into the bathroom stall to change for my gym class that day. I was actually going to openly, you know, change in front of the, all the other girls because I was wearing the most adorable set of undergarments. Uh, Vidal Sassoon, little bra that hooked in the front, and that was brand new for me, and a set of panties that matched. My mom's friend had given me this beautiful set, and I thought, I know some of these girls that have, you know, that, that tend to be not so nice to me are going to be like, oh, that's so nice. Look at you and your cute underwear. Um, and again, I was so excited to change, and I put on my gym uh, clothes, and I went out to the field, and I'm standing there, and I'm standing out proud, and all of a sudden, I noticed that these girls were staring at me and doing the, you know, the pointing thing. And little did I know that when you are out in the sun and you are wearing a white T-shirt, like it was our shirt for Jim, that things are pretty transparent. And that sheer um, fabric that the cups of my undergarments were made out of, um, all of a sudden, we're showing everything. So soon the girls in my class were making fun of me and laughing and the gym teacher um, promptly sent me back to the locker room to change. So it was a big failure. And I have to say that that was one of those defining moments in my life in which I realized that, you know, nothing that you can leverage, the clothes, the makeup um, for me were going to be the thing that created confidence. Confidence had to be created from what was here in my mindset and also from the daily action that created the habits that allowed me to feel more um, in control of who I was. And, you know, I will be, I'm a big proponent of makeup, by the way. I love my good red lipstick, but I don't rely on a lot of that for for that confidence feelings that has gotten me through. Fast forward in my life, I went ahead and I um, climbed the corporate ladder. And I was so fortunate, so fortunate that the biggest mentor in my life 
with my father. And the name of my company, Go Confidently Services, comes from Go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life you have imagined. And that's a quote, as many of you know, from Henry David Thoreau. I first heard that quote from my dad. And as I started to climb the corporate ladder, any time that I was unsure of myself, that I was a beginner at something, that I was just kind of um, getting my feet wet in, in whatever circumstance, whether it be a new role or speaking at conferences or trying to go for the next big thing, um, I reminded myself that go confidently. But with every new beginning, it meant doing the daily action, doing the daily thing to practice, to become better. Um, as I continued in that corporate career for over 20 years, I was able to get into the C-suite of an organization. And it took a lot, but ultimately one of the things that, and most of us know this already, the higher we grow in our uh, organizations, we see less and less women in that role. And, you know, we've experienced watching our, for whatever reason, our sisters just stepping back. And one of the biggest things that I would hear from others is, Julie, I wish I was as confident as you did as you are. I wish I could do the things that you are doing. And even now, my biggest response to people is that I don't always have it together. I don't always feel like an expert at something. But what allows me to show up confidently forward is that I keep trying, that I understand that um, it is a process, that it's something that we continue to work at. And when I work at it, whether I am achieving it or not, I am going to celebrate it because behavioral science, behavior design tells us that change happens not when we feel bad, but happens when we feel good. And again, you know, I was lucky enough to have a father that believed in me, that helped me believe in me in myself. But now I want to pass on that belief to others. I want to pass on the belief to the many women who are out there and for whatever reason have felt that, you know, I don't have what she has. I don't have um, the skills or I could never be as poised or as well-dressed or as uh, savvy and fill in the blank, right? But I want us to know that anything that we set our mind to is possible as long as we are willing to try, as long as we are willing to take the first step into doing it. You know, I remember that after that fiasco as a 12-year-old, I did not go back into hiding in the shadows uh, of the bathroom stall. And the main reason I didn't um, hide is because I came to the conclusion that this was me. And I, I, my dad reminded me that not everybody was going to always like me, but that I needed to be okay with myself. I needed to be okay. And listen, it's not like I have it all together at all times, but it's something that we have to practice in order to really own it, in order to really step into that purpose, into that moment. We all have the sabotaging beliefs, we all have this judge that is always speaking to us. And for the reason that we're here, we're here to celebrate the power that we have as passionate, purposeful individuals. I want to remind you that it is normal to have that judge. You know, our brain is programmed to be negative. Our brain is programmed to have all these other voices that for whatever reason have become saboteurs in our life. And many people say to me, you know, Julie, I don't understand. Like I, I'm always telling myself that I can't or I won't, I shouldn't, I wouldn't. Um, how do I change that? And, and there's so many different things that we can do to change that. But ultimately, what I want you to know is that we have to learn to normalize that we're not always going to feel that confident. We're not always going to feel our motivation because if we're relying on motivation to do the thing, we're never going to accomplish it. 
But what we can rely on is creating the simple habits, the everyday consistent action for our lives that remind us like, you know what, today I'm not going to like just get undressed in this locker room, but maybe I am going to uh, take the first step and make it um, last and be consistent and continue to do that so that it becomes second nature and celebrate ourselves for the process. The same thing happens when we're building a business or when we are, maybe you're looking to be a speaker or write a book. The more that you continue to show up on a daily basis and taking that minimum action and then celebrating what you're doing, the more that you're going to start to program and reprogram the voices, the judge, the saboteurs that we all have in our head. Um, Again, there's nothing wrong with having these saboteurs. There's 10 different saboteurs that that, um, tend to be very prominent for us. For me, one of my sabotaging uh, voices that tends to really uh, give me pause is the high achiever. The high achiever is always someone that is looking to get to the next level and be really good at it. And sometimes if I think, oh, I could never really good at, be good at that, I, 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 I stop trying. And that's how we sabotage ourselves and we rob ourselves of our ability to do the thing to feel confident, to stand in our power. So when I have that voice in my brain telling me, you can never do this, you're not good enough, then what I do is I start to normalize that and say, oh my God, there goes my brain again telling me I'm not going to do it perfectly, so I might as well not do it at all. And then I start to look at the gift, the gift in every circumstance, because When we start to look at the gift in the circumstances, even those challenging circumstances, what we start to do is we start to rewire how we are going to show up. Um, You know, when we're looking at the woe is me, when we are allowing ourselves to be stuck in that moment, um, then it's very difficult to continue to want to move forward. So I encourage you to definitely look at the different ways in which you sabotage yourself and rob yourself of the confidence. These things, again, we're not going to be able to ever turn them off or get rid of them, but we are going to be able to then just rewire a little bit at a time, change what we are saying, the internal dialogue. In the last session that we had You know, there was a prominent uh, concept that people were really discussing, and that was that imposter syndrome. And imposter syndrome is great because at times it has allowed us to be protected from situations that might not be great. But at the same time, in order to overcome it, we need to be able to understand that this is happening. There's other sabotaging things that rob you of confidence. For instance, the people pleasers in here, um, those things will also rob you of the confidence to do the things and to show up every day and to make your mark in the world. If you're always looking to do for others, but you're not really saying, you know, what does that mean to me? Then that is another way in which you are really taking away from you. 